In the wake of November 18, 1993, Fox Kids faced a crisis. Angry letters from fans, calls from parents, a completely unexpected reaction. Kids were too depressed to go to school, or they had locked themselves in various rooms, or couldn't sleep. The cause of this distress? Tommy Oliver, the Green Power Ranger, had lost his powers in the two-parter The Green Candle, and as a fan favorite, few enjoyed the idea of him being gone. This list of reactions reminds me of Optimus Prime's death, and I think there's a common idea between the two events. Although fictional, characters to which we've grown attached become a part of our routine, our stability. When they go, we're left with a life destabilized. Yet I think we need such events to better prepare for personal loss, for when we must say goodbye, knowing that there is no return. Let me paint you a picture from my own childhood. The year was 1993 and Power Rangers was an unexpected hit across America and indeed, the world. While it was certainly big on camp with squeaky clean protagonists who were rather buff to be high schoolers, the show had plenty of action and cool monster fights to get the kids' imaginations going. As a result, Power Ranger toys were liquid gold and sold out everywhere. So when my mom and I had finished a trip to the airport and stopped by a random Toys R Us, only to discover that all three giant robot toys were in stock, we snatched them up straight away. But there was a little something extra included with the Dragon Zord, a Power Ranger figure, green no less, and with a golden shield? I was hyped before the first TV promo even came out. With amazing strength, Morphin powers, and an incredible Dragon Zord. This was the start of Jason David Frank's role as Tommy Oliver a character and actor contracted for 14 episodes who would become the face of the franchise and hailed as Greatest Ranger. But if you asked me to point out an episode that affirmed why he deserved such admiration, I don't think I could do so. Certainly, I'd point to Return of an Old Friend as an example of some of his best, but that episode only works if you understand what came before and what was to follow. So let's go through the phases of Jason David Frank's career and why his role as a Power Ranger appealed to so many. It began when Frank was brand new to the acting scene, dealing with agents who wanted him to cut his hair to fit expectations and giving him half-hearted suggestions for parts. Eventually, he landed the part of Tommy Oliver. Part of this was due to his martial arts prowess, having trained since he was four years old. Already impressing people by matching the Red Ranger blow for blow, series villain Rita Repulsa was downright swooning for him. Oh, did you see that guy? So in true villain fashion, she magically abducts Tommy and brainwashes him into being her servant, and over the course of five episodes, he pushes the team to their limit. He's able to outfight all five at once, wrecks the command center, isolates Jason from the group, casts their zords into lava, and then goes on a rampage with his own dragon zord. He's whooping them so hard that the rangers consider giving up. Let's face it, the Green Ranger was Rita's trump card. She played it. She won. And through it all, Frank's vocals gave the Green Ranger a real sense of menace. He had a charisma for being a bad guy, making one wonder if there was a better person under all that control. Come on! You pathetic Power Rangers are finally going down! Even in the final showdown, he pushes the Red Ranger to his limit. Yet in the end, he was freed from the spell and decided to join the Rangers. Fight by our side and we can defeat Rita. After everything that's happened, Tommy, we need you. It's where you belong. This leads us to our first pin in Frank's portrayal of Tommy. <laughs> the original five rangers were given the choice to become heroes. That included the freedom to refuse. I tell you what, it's been real, but I gotta go. Yeah, see ya. Side note, this is the only time I remember these teenagers with attitude having any actual attitude. Tommy was conscripted. I wouldn't have blamed him if he simply turned in the coin and walked away. Instead, he stayed on and became a semi-member of the team. I say semi because an odd trend started. Tommy hardly ever morphed alongside the team for a fight. The usual format was that the Rangers would engage in the fight, struggle to reach the giant phase, and then the Green Ranger would appear to summon the Dragon Zord and lend support. This was because the original Japanese Sentai series, Dinosaur Squadron Ju Ranger, had put a limitation on the footage. In the land of the rising sun, the Dragon Ranger was an ancient warrior who had been crushed to death while in suspended animation, and was only able to extend his resurrection within a special chamber. Every moment he was outside fighting was another minute towards his end. 
お兄ちゃんに残された命はあと15時間しかないわ。I see this as a limitation placed on the Dragon Ranger so that he couldn't dominate fights moving forward. After all, this was a guy who took down the entire team before receiving a weapon. So better to keep him in timeout until the mech battle. Though I'm surprised the Bond Entertainment never found a use for this footage. <laughs> So while there was an expectation that the Green Ranger would kick all kinds of monster posterior, truth was he was more of a summoning device for another giant mech. But two aspects kept us interested in Tommy's career. Unlike his picture-perfect peers, the Green Ranger had a stain in his history. All his actions were an effort to redeem past wrongs. This isolation from the rest of the team also required that Tommy have different subplots going. Be it captured by putties or auditioning for a martial arts promo, Tommy had a distinct identity apart from the group. This added to his appeal as an imperfect character trying to forge a new life. It also didn't hurt that he was constantly flirting with Kimberly. No one knows. Wow. But we can be sure Looks that like the power range better. Ever they Any young person who recognized Amy Jo Johnston's beauty would wish to be in Tommy Oliver's shoes. Cannon declared otherwise, but these two remain my OTP. Too bad their first and only kiss took place at the end of the Green Candle two-parter. In Japan, that candle represented Burai's lifespan. For Tommy, it was a countdown to steal his powers. Jason David Frank's contract came to a close. 14 episodes doesn't sound like much, especially given the limited role in his various fights. Frank's career began to shift. The plan was for him to star in a new show trying to copy the Power Rangers success. The Japanese hero Chujinki Metalder would become Cybertron, with Frank playing Adam Steele who melds human spirit with a robot's power to birth a new hero. Big mistake, Tinhead! <laughs> Meanwhile, actor Brad Hawkins was on track to become the new White Ranger, but the outpouring for Frank caused a switcheroo. I was among the angry fans who wrote in, demanding the Green Ranger's return. Back then, I didn't know the plotline of Jew Ranger and the limitations it placed, though I'm glad to say I wasn't one of those poor kids so depressed they refused to eat, sleep, or go to school. The Fox Network faced a crisis. This toll on kids' mental health could result in lawsuits. So the showrunners told Frank they needed him back. Frank would return as the Green Ranger and eventually become the White Ranger, while Hawkins became Ryan Steele of VR Troopers. I don't know if this choice was the reason Haim Saban reached out to Toy Productions to commission more Power Rangers footage, but it did provide an opportunity. Frank reclaimed his power coin in the two-parter Return of an Old Friend, and this stands as one of my favorite episodes because of what it signifies thus making it the second pin in Frank's career. The Green Ranger had driven the team to defeat, made them question if they could even go on. But when the villains take their power coins by holding their families captive, only the Green Ranger can tip the balance back. Their destroyer is now their savior. All right, Tom. I'm so glad to see you. It's good to be back. It also helps that we got to see some new fights and monsters. The fan named Jew 2 footage enabled the Green Ranger to make a return and actually take part in battles. I especially enjoyed seeing him go head to snout with his Schwarzenegger parody. There was a caveat to this return. The Green Ranger's powers were temporary, and thus he was still safer when the team was at a crisis point. Like Burai before him, Tommy now faced a consequence to every transformation. He was paying the price for this power, and yet he did so without hesitation. This trade-off only heightened his standing in the fandom. But with the advent of the new lead in Lord Zed and a focus on draining away the Green Ranger's powers, Tommy became a heavier focus. He even got brainwashed again, likely to give his evil half another hurrah. <laughs> with Green No More, we got another send-off to the Green Ranger. But this one had a different feel to it as it gave the character of Tommy a chance to shine unmorphed out of your mind. This felt like a genuine tribute and celebration, but it also helped that in the following episodes, the characters kept mentioning Tommy. Jason, you made the right decision when you left Tommy's candle. This was in stark contrast to not giving him one mention after the Green Candle episodes. This was for you, Tommy, wherever you are. Now it was time to shift the footage and mech battles to Guard Star Squadron Die Ranger which just so happened to feature the Kiba Ranger, who was a nine-year-old. Oh, 
じゃバカにされるからな Just glad they didn't try to adapt this scene. Returning to the show in The White Light, Tommy didn't get the most gentle invitation. That looks painful. But I'm going to assume that this time, Zordon and Alpha 5 gave him the choice to become a ranger, and he said yes. Because the White Ranger was a clean slate for this character, and apparently a promotion. So, Power Rangers, may I assume that you are pleased with the new leader of the Power Team? This is great. I applaud Jason for accepting his unearned demotion with such chill, almost like they had to change that line to match up with the departure of three actors. Actually, Austin St. John claimed that there was some conflict over this change. All six originally agreed to leave because Jason Frank had stabbed us in the back and、uh, had converted David Yost and Amy Jo, talked them into staying. And they had already promised him the White Ranger role because he wanted the leadership slot and we would get it if I left. I can't confirm this recounting's accuracy. All I know for certain is that there was a lot of contention about the production and pay for the entire staff. With several cast members leaving as a sign of protest. There are many who argue that having at least several cast members stay helped the franchise continue. Things went smoothly for Tommy after his return a new set of friends to round out the Ranger team, the ability to morph without consequence, and he could now best four of Zed's monsters on his own. Well, I'm sorry. I guess I forgot to tell you guys sushi's my favorite food. But the character for Tommy is one that has to face the past to either surmount it. Or use it to teach a lesson. His next big test came in Return of the Green Ranger, where he faced an evil counterpart. We all have our dark sides. So we get the ultimate fanboy fight. Pick your team Team White or Team Green. But while this fight appeals to the fanboy within me, there's something I missed as a kid. Victory didn't come by defeating the Green Ranger or the Dragon Zord. It was when the White Ranger literally overcame his past self and destroyed the source of the corruption. So, what we wound up with was the White Ranger redeeming the green. No matter how hard they tried, Reed and Zed have never been able to turn me evil. But me? I'm not even a part of me. And then they traveled back in time to save people from giant rats. The 90s could get weird. <sighs> One last battle as the Green Ranger. Don't bet on that. <laughs> also, if you thought this was the only time Frank would play a hero fighting rats with a flute weapon, you'd be wrong. We all know your magic flute is powerless. Why, it's completely useless. <laughs> Not completely. After this point, the White Ranger wasn't so much of a focus as the rest of the team. They all went through the crisis of having their Zords destroyed and losing their powers. They then gained new powers and Zords after seeking out Dudley Do Right Jr. I mean, Ninja. Behold the power. Of your new ninja This was a clever idea on the production team's part. The Source Sentai footage, Ninja Team Kaku Ranger, had no sixth ranger. So instead, they took the mechs from the second half of the series and claimed that the Falcon, who had no operator, was the White Ranger Zord. I'm the Falcon! Just enable! But things took a turn with the introduction of a new villain, Cat. With her infiltrating the Ranger's trust, the villains were able to steal Kimberly's power coin, capture the Falcon Zord, and Ninja. The change on the Zord's multi parter saw the team at its weakest since the introduction of the Green Ranger. Without the Falcon Zord, the other Zords couldn't activate, for some reason. Bit of a design flaw there. It gets worse as losing a power coin now takes a toll on Kimberly's body, as the two are linked. And while all of this can be explained as wanting to use the earlier Kaku Ranger footage, In story mode, I can reach but one conclusion. Ninja is a terrible designer. Tommy didn't take this well. You know, when Zed took away my powers, man, I thought it was the end of everything. This is why I argue that Tommy got some of the best development in the series. Not only is he able to reconcile his past, but he can also use it to empathize with others. Man, I just like to get my hands on Lord Zed just once. <laughs> And he did. When Zed manages to abduct Kimberly and threatens to drain her life force, it's the White Ranger who goes to the rescue and ends up confronting Zed himself. Are those high odds really necessary? Here, I'll do something. Whoa, whoa, come and get me. 
The White Ranger then proceeds to get all but curb stomped. It's only when he breaks Zed's staff that the fight ends. Uh, why you power parasite? You pay for that! This was special because no other ranger fought with Zed until Dino Fury, 26 years later. Plus, Tommy got to get in the best hit on the Monster of the Week with his new Shogun Zord. You're toast! But while this satisfied the action aspect, I find I much preferred the emotional support Tommy offered Kimberly after the battle. Remember what you told me when I lost my powers? Yeah, I said that you'd be okay. And that you would always have us all. Yeah, and you'll have me. The Rangers would claw their way back to full strength in phases. First off, Kat finally broke the spell holding her, but not before Kimberly wound up in the hospital. There were so many times that I just wanted to pull you all aside and tell you that I knew you were the Power Rangers and that all these terrible things that were happening were because of me. It's here that Tommy's past became a strength for the team as Kat came clean. You know how Tommy became a Power Ranger? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I was on the one to read his spells too. I made me do horrible things. Yeah, but look what happened. Everything turned out all right. The acting was a little stiff, but I like how the characters are turning what was a destructive period into a bridge. With Kat's help, the Rangers reclaim the pink power coin and Kimberly turns the power over to her new friend. Tommy's history was once again challenged when he snuck back into Zed's palace alongside Kat to claim the Zeo crystal. Only problem was that it was protected by a shield that destroyed anyone evil. Oh, anyone who was once evil, like a former Green Ranger! Tommy had to deal with more than a few illusions before facing the crystal's test. I like that this wasn't a red herring. The shield did punish him for a minute as he remembered his past, but it also recalled the good done as both the Green and White Rangers. And on the way out, he manages to get another one-up on Zed and Rita. Zed, Rita, I believe you have something of ours. <laughs> Combine that with Ninja's escape and the crew was finally back at full power. Just in time to get turned into children, quest for the scattered Zeo crystal, grow back up, and have the command center get blown up. At this point, it shouldn't be a surprise that the Rangers bounced back yet again with a better command center and upgrading their costumes. Now the Red Ranger, Tommy's struggles didn't center so much on his past. Rather, he had to discipline himself to control the Red Battle Zord. I've been trying to use my mind to exert control, but what I really need to do is to relax and see the Battle Zord as an extension of myself. Of course, there was an episode where he was brainwashed and thought he led the Machine Empire. I think they did this to give his maniacal laughter one last hurrah. <laughs> and another episode gave his singing chops a run. There must be ways to stop this. The only real aspect of Tommy's past we explore here is the discovery of a long-lost brother. This gave Frank's real-life brother Eric some time in the spotlight, but he was quickly phased out. As for the transition to Turbo, we don't talk about Turbo. After leaving Power Rangers, Frank would go on to take on various other roles, some even uncredited. He also began a career in mixed martial arts and worked his way up to an eighth degree black belt. When asked about his plans for his MMA career, he said he would just go out there and do my best and prove that I'm a real fighter. Some worried he was under extra pressure given his career on Power Rangers. Frank replied, the guy on the other side of the cage has pressure because if I kick his butt, he got his butt kicked by a Power Ranger. So you tell me, who's got more pressure, me or him? Would you want to get knocked out by a Power Ranger? Personally speaking, I would not like that at all. Thank you. Frank would also continue to instruct self-defense and eventually modify it into his own fighting style, Toso Kundo, or Way of the Fighting Fist. But while other actors might try to leave their Power Ranger careers in the past, Frank seemed proud of it and often returned. He led the gathering of all the Red Rangers for the Wild Force episode, Forever Red. May the power protect you all. But he'd take on a different role within Power Rangers Dino Thunder. This, the third pin in his career. No longer just the leader, Tommy had Freak to... <laughs> Tommy had to become a mentor to a set of teens who were far less squeaky clean than his crew. Do you remind me so much of myself when I was your age? I had all this ability and raw emotion, but it took me a while to get the confidence to believe in myself. And eventually becoming the new Black Ranger, meaning you could now fill out an entire Ranger-sized team with just the roles played by Frank. I may be old, 
but I can still pull it off. Though he didn't receive the same deference Tommy showed to Zordon. Remember, Dr. Rose got a thing for dinosaurs. Don't even start with me, Connor. I think it's a perfect match. Aren't you guys late for your next class? But of course, there had to be an episode where he confronted his past selves. Finally cut that hair, huh, Tommy? White Ranger. Unlike past seasons, he actually got to finish the fight alongside his team. We've been through a lot. More than any school should have to go through. But we made it. And we're okay. That show's end was not the last of Frank's role within Power Rangers. He even championed past roles in the series Super Power Beatdown, where the Green and White Rangers beat Ryu and Scorpion, respectively. Game over. Of course, he made it to New Zealand to record his role for the legendary battle of Super Mega Force. And he would return to all his previous forms by wielding the Master Morpher in Power Rangers Ninja Steel. See you, Ranger 5! Red! And, surprise, he battled an evil version of himself. You're nothing like me. You have no heart. But perhaps the biggest contribution was the promoting of the Shattered Grid series of comics and video games as Lord Draken, an alternate dimension version of Tommy who turned down the offer to join the Power Rangers and eventually became a tyrant himself. They will realize the truth. They could have been gods. I find Elseworld stories like this fascinating because they explore the road not traveled, the way things could have turned out. Tommy may not have been proud of his earlier acts as the Green Ranger, but here's a demonstration that he could have been far, far worse. And Frank's appearance in other media would call back to his Power Ranger days, even in something as seemingly different as We Bear Bears. I'm Silver Bear! Ah, sit, sit. Ah. Frank seemed to fully embrace his history with the Power Rangers, and I think fans responded to that. But it would be dishonest to say that Frank's career and the relationships with others were squeaky clean. It sounds like he and St. John butted heads on more than one occasion. I walked in, I said, You didn't think I was going to let you do this without the original Red Ranger, did you? And immediately, first scene after I get off the bike, after I come in, I've reestablished dominance, and it was great. And Frank nearly came to blows with Jean-Claude Van Damme, though Frank would later say he held no personal ill will. I can't speak to Frank's true character as I never met him and only know him from these online articles. But a theme that has come through more recently is that Frank felt he struggled with duality. According to his close friend, Mike Bronzolis, Frank struggled with depression and the loss of many friends and family due to suicide. His brother died in 2001 from an illness. His mother passed away in 2015. Frank did his best not to carry this grief into his appearances before fans, but a consequence of this duality is that he started to feel like he was becoming someone else. He spoke about this in a poem video. You start to wonder, and then you begin to ask, is this me, or is it just a mask? I think Frank connected to an idea similar to that of T.S. Eliot, from the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. There will be time. There will be time to prepare a face to meet the faces that you meet. We all put on a persona to interact with the world and hold certain aspects in reserve. Part of this is a basic social function, but unaddressed issues can create a feeling of loneliness, even when surrounded by people. To quote Bronzolis, Despite having tons of friends and getting love from thousands of fans, he often felt very lonely. Frank was also going through a divorce with his second wife, I'm not going to go into detail on this breakup, as I think it would be a disservice to all involved. On November 19th, 2022, Jason David Frank took his own life. There's much we don't know about his struggle, and we're not entitled to know. But there's something I didn't cover about the character arc of Tommy Oliver. Frank depicted a character who started on a dark note, but rose to greater heights and continually faced and overcame his past, who never let past tragedy define his future. But I think it's important to note that he never did so alone. At every step, the other rangers supported him, even when he lost his powers. You'll always be one of us. And even in the Legend of the White Dragon movie, Frank's final film, the pitch emphasizes that he must work with others to overcome adversity. This movie will be the last pin in Frank's career. He has played the destroyer and savior, a leader and a mentor. Now, how will he take all that experience and bring it into a role that's trying for a more mature take on superheroes? We'll see how that story unfolds in 2024. So if there's any message to take away from this video and a study of Frank's portrayals, it's that asking for help is not weakness. We all need support in our lives. And if you ever feel like it's becoming too much, I want you to remember the phone number 988. 
It's the National Suicide Crisis Lifeline. There is absolutely no shame or weakness in calling this number and asking for help. Because the character of Tommy Oliver, to whom Jason David Frank gave life, represents just that. A strength born from the support of others that can withstand trial after trial and emerge on the other side. I hope you all realize that you're stronger than you think and that you can rise above whatever may be facing you. Just know that one of the bravest things we can do is ask for help. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters for their patience and support. And thanks go to the Konus Video Archive and MMPR Toys for the footage of the various Power Ranger figures. And thanks to all the artists who created works in celebration of both Jason David Frank and other actors we've lost.